people can jump in. <laughs> people can jump in. Yeah, they can jump in. Well, thank you. Yeah, Di's like, let's do it. So thank you everyone for coming today. Uh, the topic, if you did not know, is burnout. Are you burnt out from the events that have happened? And so instead of doing a um, Q&A or interview style, we decided we would do a conversation. So um, Adrian and I are just going to kind of talk about um, our experiences with burnout and what's been happening to us. And then this is a conversation. So we're hoping that all of you will join in either by unmuting yourself or um, in the chat. We have Diane in the chat who will be monitoring the chat for us. So if you uh, are in a position where you can't get off uh, mute, uh, go ahead and type into the chat and she will make sure to chime in for part of the conversation. Yep. Sounds good. Let's dig in. Let's do it. So I think our first question for the group is, are you feeling any burnout? <laughs> Some of you might not be. So we just kind of wanted to survey the group here. We're several weeks, months into months. <laughs> shelter in place or pandemic, COVID, whatever you want to call this coping period that we're in. And are you feeling the burnout? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And I'll, I guess while we're letting others chime in, Marie, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> are you feeling the burnout? <laughs> yes, I am. The past two days, this week has been really crazy. So it's kind of funny when Di asked, oh, how, how's the week going? Um, the week has been going crazy for some odd reason. It's a holiday week, which doesn't feel like a holiday week, but everyone is acting like it's a holiday week. And so um, everyone has tried to cram in meetings for the four days that we are in work mode. And in my head, I'm thinking, but I could still work on Friday. So I don't understand why people keep <laughs> filing on meetings. So a great example is yesterday, I had meetings on the hour, every hour until seven o'clock. And in the middle of that, I had this great meeting with um, Tom and um, Leslie and Adrian. How did I look on that meeting? <laughs> tired, a little tired. A little tired. I think maybe ready for it to be the last meeting, even though we know it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's the kind of thing that was funny because that was the, like the middle of the day and I still had a whole series of meetings to go till seven. And, you know, I was kind of hoping that it would get better in the sense of they would go quickly and I could like take a break or even like run to the restroom or have a glass of water. And it did not go that way. At one point, I would get off a Zoom call, run over to like either grab a water or do something, and then my phone would ring, and I'd run back, and then I'd have a quick call, and then I'd say, I have to go, I have another Zoom call, and jump on a Zoom call. So I had Zoom fatigue <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> I was tired. <laughs> Zoomed out, I yep. think. And, and, I feel the same and I'm not in nearly as many meetings as, as you have been in and yet Zoom, you know, when this all began, Zoom felt very uncomfortable and do we have to do a video, but we're doing video. Okay, fine. And, and can we just do a phone call? And then I got so used to Zoom meetings yeah. that that became almost like a new normal, right? Like a Zoom meeting. And so then it felt weird to have a phone call without being able to see somebody. <laughs> so like, wait, turn your video on. Do we want video? But yeah, I get it. Like everybody is kind of zoomed out and sometimes the phone call so you can take a walk or not be in front of your computer is just refreshing, right? You know, I just scheduled scheduled a call with a consultant friend of mine and she said, can we just do phone so I can sit on the deck? and have just a coffee and a chat. I'm like, yeah. yeah, let's do that. Like I sit on the deck anyway, Zoom or not, but <laughs> not everybody wants to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, I know so. in the comments too, I saw that uh, Tom said, old fashioned phone calls are the best, right? So <laughs> that's the thing. And I, I understand the Zoom fatigue because before the pandemic, I was using Zoom. 
Um, and I, but I was one of those people that would use Zoom but not get on video because I hated getting on video. I'm like, I have to do my hair and I have to do my makeup and that. Right. And so the thing that changed for me is I'm much more comfortable doing the video now because I just don't even pay attention to myself. You know, I'm like one of the boxes and I don't care. But I am getting tired and I have to confess, I'm, I miss just having a conversation with someone without having the distraction of the background and all kinds of stuff. So that yeah. is causing some fatigue. And then also to not being able to get out, you know? Yes. Causing because some fatigue. You're literally tethered then to your computer, right? I mean, I suppose you could walk with Zoom on your phone, but... <laughs> Or the computer like this. You might walk into traffic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about distracted world, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so Diane, what's going on in the chat? What are people saying? Well, the best thing is it feels like Groundhog Day. Oh. And I thought that was just perfect because it does. Um, and everyone agrees. Um, everyone's kind of getting now to that six to eight week point of, ugh, you know, <laughs> kind of getting tired of this, but um tom said i'm loving old-fashioned phone yeah i know and then i said yeah it's hard to have a glass of wine on zoom but, <laughs> you know, people still do it <laughs> um, you just need to disguise I, it in a tumbler die <laughs> yeah exactly it could be anything exactly. then iced tea or you just say it's a party but and then <laughs> exactly it's happy hour somewhere right yeah yeah, yeah. 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 besides zoom what is contributing to burnout? So we know, so Zoom meetings, your long schedule, mm -hmm. you know, so you've had just longer hours mm -hmm. cutting into what might have been commuting time or things like that. But beyond, beyond those things, what is contributing to people feeling burned out? So love to hear yeah. some ideas. Yeah, for sure. Look, what, what about you? What's contributing to your burnout? Yeah, for, for me, I think it's, the biggest thing is just scattered days, right? Like I don't have, I have a routine, but it's not really a routine. You know, mm -hmm. I've got a couple of things that I, like I always get up and, I, and work out in the morning first thing. And even when, when I've got young daughters, five and eight. And so when we had homeschooling, there at least was school. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of created a little bit of a routine, but then there's no like for for my husband and I we're kind of tag teaming between between doing some work in childcare and you know I we got into this really what what kind of was a good habit where I literally would block my office hour time on my husband's calendar so we had that we used that as a communication channel and hopefully that stuck and sometimes it didn't and you know so it's always having to be so flexible and then looking back and wanting to get things done, but, but maybe not getting to any of that and mm -hmm. having to be okay with that. I think that for me has, you know, I'm kind of done with that. Like I'd rather, I'd like to just get back into, okay, between these hours, this is what's happening for everybody in the house mm -hmm. <laughs> so that I can plan better around that. Yeah, that, that getting into a rhythm thing is a, a big, a big thing. And I think I, I saw a pop up in the chat, someone saying the rhythm of the day is off and nonstop emails. I think, you know, it's great not having the commute. The disadvantage is because you don't have the commute, you're having longer days because people are like, oh, well, you're at home. So I can send you an email about this at you know, 10 o'clock at night, or I can send you, right. or, you know, we can, I can pop on the phone with you, like right after my seven o'clock uh, meeting, the CEO of the company that I was meeting with just called me to debrief on the meeting. Well, it's now, you know, it's seven o'clock. And honestly, I didn't make dinner. Okay. And, you know, it was one of those things where, I didn't make dinner. My husband didn't have a chance to make dinner. So, you know, we're looking at each other and we're going, oh, okay. So now it's eight o'clock. What do you want to do for dinner? And, and let's face it, takeout isn't exactly easy right now, I, right? It's I, not just go run and pick up something. You have to be a little bit more planful about that right, right now. So exactly. that makes it even harder. Yeah, exactly. So there's, yeah. The, yeah, Diane, what's going on in the chat? Well, how are people feeling about what's contributing to the burnout for them? 
Um, a really good one from Randy was nonstop emails. Mm. They never stop. We don't have an end and we don't have a beginning. I think that in itself is kind of, and then the days are longer. So that doesn't help, you know, yeah. like I personally, I have a hard time going to sleep. Like I, I'm, I can't, I, I can't disconnect and I don't know. That's kind of crazy. It, Let's see what else. Um, yeah, the days seem to run into each other. We're technology overload, yeah, because of the Zoom and the whole, that's for sure. And I think we just miss people. I just think we don't get the small talk. I mean, we do it on Zoom, but, or wherever, mm -hmm. but we don't really have it. We can't see them and, and feel it. And just the whole, you know, we're using one or two senses now. We're not using all five and, that, and that's hard. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a really good point. And you know, it's funny. So this is that, you know, uh, do as I, I say, not as I do moments mm -hmm. where I, I tell people they need to create a schedule <laughs> when they're going to talk to people for when they're going to do what, so that they don't get overwhelmed and they have a cutoff to their day or they need a separation from where they're working to their home. And I'm really bad at the scheduling the time for myself. You know, the tip I always give is 90 minutes and then take a break. And yesterday, um, if anybody said to me, did you do that? The truth is, nope, <laughs> I did yeah. not do that for myself. And that contributes yeah. to that burnout, you know, get back to, to Dai's point about not being able to sleep or just being so tired you can't sleep. Right. Your brain mm -hmm. is running and you can't shut down because you're not giving yourself those boundaries. So, right. and I guess, I, oh, go ahead. well, I was just, I was going to add, I found an interesting statistic um, of a recent survey that 31% of organizations have reported an increase to productivity levels. So what I didn't find was the comparison to engagement levels mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we know another statistic, I mean, working professionals were saying that we're we are feeling that burnout, right? It's higher by about 10, 12% from February to April, another research uh, study that I found. So the productivity is higher, but the, but the burnout is higher yeah. and our days are longer. We're not shutting off. You know, there's, there's this less of this distinct break if you commuted before. Yeah and you had 30 minutes, an hour longer, you know, I think that was almost a built-in decompression time. Even if you worked, mm -hmm. you know, like when I went downtown, I often worked, I had an hour long train ride and I often worked on that, on that ride, but it felt different because it was still disconnected. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So, mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and hopefully the better practice would be don't do don't work <laughs> during your commute, right? Because once you get home, you're back at it. So yeah. yeah. Um, but it's interesting that productivity levels are high, but yet we're feeling it. So, so that self care is very important. Yeah. And that product, you know, it's funny because statistically they say people that work remotely are much more productive than people that are in the office because you have fewer distractions right? Mm -hmm. But the disadvantage of those distractions is your brain needs those distractions. It needs, I agree. you know, you need that moment where you're, you're sort of out of what you're doing for a minute and you don't get that. And the other thing is, you know, going back to the boundaries issue, if you think about it, there's a collective thing that happens around the four or five o'clock hour if you, you know, work that schedule where you start, you're in your office, and then you see someone getting up and getting ready to leave, that sort of mentally prompts you to go, oh, I need to finish up my day because people are leaving. Well, you don't have that when you're at home because there's nobody leaving. <laughs> so you, so you, kind of, you, you kind of forget what time, I mean, this happens to me, I'll, I'll own this one. I forget what time it is. And so, you know, sometimes my husband will come and uh, into my office and say, do you know what time it is? And then he'll say, don't look at the computer. You know, like don't cheat and look at the bottom of the computer because I'm on the computer, but I'm not even paying attention to what the time is on the computer. 
And so now I'm like, ah, it's, it's um, 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 apparently late because you're looking at me with that stern look that I am, I, I'm not coming out and socializing with everyone. <laughs> you know? So I, I think that's kind of a, a thing that's happening is that we, we don't have boundaries. We don't have those, those moments where we take a break. And didn't you tell me that people are not taking vacations? Remember we kind yes. of that. Yes, I was just reading an article in HBR that um, that leaders need to encourage their their colleagues to take to take their vacations. So people might be inclined to we're canceling if we had a planned vacation, if we had a spring break planned. Well, and that there was travel involved, you had to cancel that, right? If there was a summer vacation where there's travel involved, likely you're canceling it. And people are also, can because of that, just canceling their days off and working. Yeah. So the article was about, hey, managers, leaders, encourage your people to still take that time. And it might not be take the whole, take a week or two weeks off, take a day, take one day a week and truly shut down work and do whatever whatever it is that makes you happy and helps you to decompress, do that. And of course that starts with the leaders, right? They set that example too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm wondering from the group of people that are here, you know, how supportive are your bosses or the leadership of your companies um, about taking time off? You know, I'm curious to, to hear if that's something that's encouraged. I see someone said very supportive. <laughs> Good. <laughs> that's absolutely great. Yeah, because I think that's really important because it does start with the leaders um, in terms of, I think when people see you working really hard, and that's one thing that I'm, I, I have to be really conscious of is that I really make it a point not to answer my uh, team's emails uh, after five o'clock. Because I don't, even though I'm answering like customer emails and obviously I took a customer call <laughs> way after five o'clock, I really am conscious not to do that with my team because I really don't want to set the example that it's okay for them to work until eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night, that it's better for them to five o'clock, you're done, shut it down, spend time with your family. Again, it's that do as I say, not as I do, I'm working on it. I'm working on it, guys. <laughs> right, because, and that message is not that it's, not that it's okay. It, it could be that the perception is that that's expected. Right. 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 Depending right. on the culture of the organization, if you see a leader or a manager doing that, it could be your feeling it's expected to respond immediately, right? right. Rather than responding, you know, in, in your normal working hours. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you don't want to, and you inadvertently set that example because you. You do. I'm obviously I'm telling people take time off, do, do those things, but I'm not doing it myself. And so people watching me could easily say, Oh, well then you need to, you know, you need to work hard too. Cause Marie's doing mm -hmm. that. And grant, granted part of it is that, you know, I'm running a business and so I have to wear a lot of hats, which is what happened to me these past two days is that um, I don't have a business development person and I need to hire one. So I'm doing that as well as doing all the other things. And so I don't want to overwhelm my team by saying, oh, well, you know, you have to wear a lot of hats too, which they do, but I don't want them to feel like that doesn't mean that they can't take time off. They can't spend time with their family. They can't enjoy the time that they do get with their family. And that's a really great point that small businesses and entrepreneurs could be feeling even more burnout than those who are working more corporate where there's larger teams, larger networks to help offset, you know, some of that work. Like you said, we wear lots of different hats. We're the marketer, we're the, we're the finance person, we're, you know, we're the business development person and we're the consultant. And so, so mm -hmm. those all have to happen simultaneously or, or like in my case with, with, you know, two, two daughters, young daughters, business kind of took a back seat for right now. It wasn't what I planned to do for 2020, but it's what's happening. And so again, you know, kind of accept it, do what you can, um, try to pivot, but 
uh, also be re reasonable and realistic, right? My friend Tom would always encourage that. <laughs> that <balance. laughs> like, have to have the balance, right? And don't beat yourself up about it if the goals that you had in January are not the goals that you're you're achieving. It's time to we have good reason to redirect our goals yeah, this year, absolutely. right? Yeah. yeah. So in the 10 minutes that we have left, what are some things that we could do to be able to combat this feeling of burnout? Because we all have it to some varying degrees. As Tom would say, you know, we have different degrees of, of stressors. So what are, what are some of the things that we can do? We'd love to hear from people in the chat or getting off mute too of some techniques that you're using. I saw someone's going on a girl's trip. Guy, what's that about? Yeah, Denise is going to Florida. Girlfriend trip. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice. Private beach. Private beach. Oh. How nice is that? Can we all go? Yeah, seriously. Do you need some more girlfriends? <laughs> yeah. We will fix awesome. I promise. <laughs> Yeah. Let's see. Evelina talked about mental health. Um, taking a mental health break is very important. Do that tomorrow and Monday, or maybe she's doing that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I know a lot of people that have four day weekends, but like you said, they're kind of going, wait, what? Okay. I've been off. You know what I mean? Like they don't know what to do with it. Right. Right. So I, I pick the beach. I think that's great, but I don't live by a beach. I live in the desert. So <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a nice hike through the desert. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, it's crazy here in New Mexico. If you go anywhere out of state, and I'm sure this is all over, but or anywhere where where the virus is rampant, you have to do a 14 day quarantine. And so, if you have a doctor appointment or a dentist appointment or an eye appointment, whatever, they they will not see you for 14 days. So it's it's a juggling act, yeah. you know. Also to get those kind of things done. So I don't know, yeah. it's hard to go on vacation, but. Yeah, for sure. I saw that Leslie said, you know, um, setting those boundaries so that you can set an example. Mm -hmm. Advice I need to take, that one is totally for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be brave and come off mute for that one. I do feel like when, um, even though I'm trying to catch up after a busy day and send off a bunch of emails in the evening, um, I find that my colleagues are responding to me, which is very nice, and I appreciate their quick response, but I probably could help the situation by not sending those emails off in the evening and waiting until the next day and, you know, just trying harder over the weekend to do less work that involves communicating with others. Um, I can do my own work, but I don't have to put questions out where it might seem like the expectation is to answer. Mm -hmm. No, that's fair. And I think a lot of us do that because it's, it's easier to do those emails and, and send out those questions with the thought, oh, they'll answer me in the morning. And then all of a sudden you get an answer. Because that happened to me. I, I, I will own the fact that I sent Leslie an email at like 10 or 11 o'clock at night, but she answered. So <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I felt some guilt there. See, that's in action. Example. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I just, I pulled up um, a slide that we prepared. So Marie and I kind of put our heads together to, to think through what sorts of things would we suggest implementing to fight burnout. And I think, you know, we've talked about a lot of these, you know, the breaks, you know, we've all mentioned we've that all take, like, taking, yeah, breaks. taking breaks. Marie, you said every 90 minutes was your recommendation, right? And just um, to, to schedule that. Yeah. And, right. And to like actually and not just put it in your calendar where you can dismiss it. No. Um, right. S set a kitchen timer, something that you need to go and go walk to, to turn it off. Right. Yeah, like the, you gave this suggestion. When we talked about it, I love that you said this about setting the microwave. The microwave. I hadn't thought about that. You know, I thought about the timer on the phone or like a a kitchen timer, but the microwave was a great one, setting the microwave because it will not stop. You have to physically <laughs> right. turn it off. So that kind of forces you into physically getting up, getting a glass of water, or even putting the timer by the water so that when you have to go turn off the timer, you can also get the water. Right, right. because staying hydrated, staying hydrated is another, another tip, right? Mm -hmm. 
to stay hydrated. Yeah. Um, what else? You know, schedule your workouts. Get up and go for a walk. Um, or if if you're one who works out regularly, make sure that you stick to that. Make that part of your day. If you can, maybe make it midday if that works for you, or right at the end of your day. That's a good way to to close out your workday and to create some of that separation between business and home life to put that workout in between. Yeah. And then um, you have to worry about being sweaty because you're on a Zoom call. So it's kind of, a <laughs> there you go. Don't schedule Zoom calls after your workout. <laughs> Ideally. <laughs> Ideally. And if you have to just don't, don't get on video. Plus no one will, will smell you because there's no smell of vision yet. So <laughs> I, that's just my theory. <laughs> Yep. As much as you can get into nature, you know, nature sounds, they do a mind and body good, right? Like I think I, I, I have not yet found one person other than people who really don't like bugs. If you're in a buggy area, maybe this would be great anxiety for you, yeah. but, but the sounds of nature are very just soothing and centering. And, you know, so as much as you can find that, I think that's very helpful. And if not, you know, meditation, focused breathing, Meditation might not be for everyone, but even just sitting still and focusing on your breath, you know, a, a handful of, of breaths. And I know Tom will criticize me because he and I've done some work and he says he knows how important meditation is to me and he knows how little I actually do it. So <laughs> <laughs> again, do as I say, not as I do. Right? <laughs> right, right, exactly. And, you know, talking about that meditation, you know, a lot of people are kind of like, oh, meditation. But the truth is, your brain needs the reset. You know, neuroscience tells us that our brains need those moments. Meditation is so healthy for us. So it's a workout for your brain. It really is. Um, and Tom said he'd never criticize you. But <laughs> gently, just um, gently, ever so gently. Yeah, but you know, just five minutes, even if it's just closing your eyes for five minutes, walking out of the, the space that you're in, and maybe even going outside. You know, just to, like breathe it resets your brain and when you're stuck on a project that's the best thing yeah it really does what well, anything else in, through chat that has come up is what are you doing or anyone on the sunshine um emily is solar powered she needs sunshine every day i love that i love that that's awesome me too that's cool uh, Emily, I wonder where she, she lives. Oh, we we're getting some feedback. So if you're um, if you're not on mute, if you could mute yourself, that'd be great. She's in Texas. She's in Texas. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So here in New Mexico, we have like 350 days a year. It's like shock and awesome. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that last the, the last two about laughing. I, laughter is so healthy. You know, I, I was dating myself when we were talking about this, and I said, remember the Reader's Digest, laughter is the best medicine. Adrian doesn't remember that. She's not <laughs> um, But <laughs> for those of us who are old enough to remember that, <laughs> it's, it's, it really is the best medicine. I mean, it just, it clears you. It, it releases the right hormones in your body. Um, I would give you the hormone, but my brain is fried. <laughs> um, but it, it does increase. Endorphins? That's the word. <laughs> Yesterday, I was like, what's my name? <laughs> yeah, it's a thing coming on right now. But anyway, so it's one of those things. Anyway, so it's one it of those does really help. It, it, it resets your body. It just makes you happy to be able to laugh. So a good laugh is important. And really communicating those boundaries, being honest with people and telling people, I, you know, no, I can't do this right now. Mm -hmm. self-care that you talked about Adrian. yeah the self-care is so important and the communication is so important i think for for me and my experience early in when we started sheltering in place i was much better at communicating you know i need this i you know i need i need this space or i need this time and i think as we fall into it, it's almost the habit of living pandemic right where we've become complacent and we start assuming that others know now no, we need now. and when we need it and, and I, that's the furthest thing from the truth right <laughs> and and so don't assume that those you're with or your coworkers or your virtually 
because it's a matter of habit or routine, some kind of routine that they know what you need at that particular point in time. So that communication is just so important. Yeah. Um, it yeah. Absolutely is. And I think on that note, we'll end with saying, you know, thank you so much for being part of this and kind of listening to our conversation and contributing to the conversation. We really appreciate it. Our next session will be on Wednesday and that's where we'll have Rock and um, Dr. Mike really talking about emotional intelligence and returning back to work. So that's a great topic, right, AJ? Yep. Looking forward. I think it's, you know, this is where we are. Businesses are starting to open up their offices at least a little bit. And how do we feel about that? And I think it's going to be all over the board, right? Where mm -hmm. we're either, nope, I want to stay home or yes, I can't wait to get in. And so talking about that and our own self-awareness of where we are and where others are with that is going to be such an important topic. And if you um, have enjoyed our Stay Connected series, we hope that you have. Um, and, you know, of course, all the presenters and the facilitators and hosts throughout this series have been doing this, you know, so that we can keep this free for everyone. So it's uh, accessible to everyone. We're asking, please consider giving back to Lewis. As you've enjoyed these series, there is a COVID-19 emergency fund. Uh, the website is right there, alumni.lewisu.edu slash flyers give. Um, please consider, that's a mouthful. Please yeah, consider making a small donation um, if you're able to help out and if you're willing to. The Lewis University students would greatly appreciate that as would all of the staff and the speakers and presenters. And with that, I think we're out of time. So thank you again. We look forward to seeing you for the next, uh, the next session and the future sessions. And we hope you've had a good time. Talk thank you, you Adrian. Soon. Thank you, Marie. Oh, thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thanks again for joining us.